Uh, all right. So the, welcome to the class, NLP class. And uh, today uh, we'll, we will be work, uh, talking about a very important topic called pre-trained models. And uh, this is exactly like, I would say one of the most important slides. Uh, Transformer is one of the key slides. I, I think you guys should understand. And if, if that is not important, this is also very important, right? Um, so why do I say it is important? Because if you understand today's slide, you probably already know. You already understand what is currently going on in the industry. Yep. So today is kind of important. Great. Um, so good morning, uh, uh, students from online too. Um, so uh, where are we now? So the we are right here, right? So so you can see that we uh yay, we finished this. Um this one we finish. Uh although there are so many things, uh right here today we will be covering uh a lot of this stuff anyway. Right? Like this stuff will be gone, right? And uh, we already cover this too. If you if you don't notice, we already done this, right? So you already know like what are the basic architecture and how do you fit each of the NLP tasks on this neural network. But today we'll be looking at something called pre-trained model, right? And all the pre-trained model user learning called self-supervised learning. Self-supervised learning, don't use any label, okay? You don't have to label the data. That is the power of self-supervised learning. That is, you can use all the data in the world to teach the model, right? This is the name, what this means, self-supervised learning. It's not like unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning without label, you try to detect patterns. But self-supervised learning is a truly way in which you actually teach the model something, but without labels, right? So it's pretty cool. How do we do that? Now, free training. So in, the, in the 2017, before 2017, we have work to work. 2013, uh, 12, 2014, right? We have past text, and this is 15, right? So those are probably um, the key one, right? And I'm not sure we have a fit. And this is around 2016. And we also have Elmo. Yep, Elmo, which I did not teach you, but basically, um, by the way, Umfit and Elmo is more like pre-trained models already, but watch away glow fast text is more like word embeddings that you guys learn. So word embeddings basically is this part. What is word embedding? It capture word knowledge, right? Basically it tells you this word means this, but it does not capture it does not capture past knowledge so maybe in a question answering this word or this thing this task means this right this question means like this or in summarization maybe there's some kind of title uh, some information about summarization that the model must learn, but it would be never captured in word embeds. In, in, in another word saying, if you only have word knowledge, it does not know the context. And we always go back to the same example we learned previously. Shit doesn't happen. We step on shit, right? It doesn't understand the context or it doesn't understand the context of that task. Right, so word embeddings is not enough, and eventually, 
because of this idea, no one ever used word embedding anymore. All right. So now you are sad because uh, you learn word to work, fast text, and uh, glow so much. And now you say, Chucky, no one use. People still using it in a different way, right? But not for like big models. So from 2017, how do we do this? The idea is very simple. We pre-train the whole thing. Whole thing. And we use this, the last H to do something. Right. So we can pre-train. You haven't know, you don't know yet what is pre-training, but we pre-train and we have some pre-trained weights. And we assume that this pre-trained weights know a lot of things about NLP. And then based on that, whenever we apply to some tasks like sentiment analysis, we can just initialize this model with all these weights, pass through the input, we get some H, and we, we, we only need to train maybe just one linear layer that we initialize. So everything is frozen, for example, right? So it's extremely good, right? So pre-training actually capture word knowledge plus as knowledge. So this is like the key, key idea about pre-training. And one drawback, but one drawback is that pre-training can take many days. And I'm not saying many days. Chat GBT takes, okay, let's say 50 days. You may say 50 days is okay. But 50 days with 100,000, I don't remember, it's probably H100. Yes. I think it's V100. Yes. How much is one V100? Uh, you guys should go search. You ask ChatGPT how much is that. ChatGPT use this much of GPU and takes 50 days. If you use your own computer, it will never happen in your life. Yes. So pre-training also have this bit, uh, uh, bit uh, drawback. If you don't understand uh, what is pre-training and fine tuning, I can give you an example. When you are in, everyone are born with different skills and personalities and strengths and weakness, right? And uh, biologically, we inherit some of them from our mom and dad, right? That is like pre-training. You are pre-trained. You, when you're born, you cannot choose who is your mom and their dad. And you are pre-trained. Pre-trained by who? Your mom and dad. The smarter and, or I'm not sure, the personality and the skills that your dad and mom have, you are pre-trained when you're inside. But when you're in the world, you, you listen to my teaching, you actually fine tuning, right? So pre-training and fine tuning can be compared to your to human being. Pre-training is DNA. It's like you are born with all these weights. Some people are smarter, some people are less smarter. Some people are better at something, some people are better at another thing. But whether you will be good in the future or in your life, you need to do very good education, right? Here is the education, right? So you need to think like, which one is important, more important, pre-training or fine-tuning? What do you guys think? Pre-training or fine-tuning? Uh -huh. This is the biggest question that deep learning people are thinking, right? Is talents, uh, is basically cannot be, like which one is important, right? Is inherent? or you can, uh, you can actually train them, right? So this is a, also a very, very important uh, question that we all have, right? But a simple answer is if you have this good and if you also do this good, then it's perfect, right? So that is uh, uh, like an analogy to you that this is like very, very good idea. Now, how to pre-train model? 
what I'm going to tell you, tell you here is basically self-supervised learning. The question is, uh, we want the model to understand everything about the world. Right? We want to create one pre-trained model that can be further fine-tuned to any specific task, right? We want to create a general pre-trained model, right? So how do we do that? We don't, we cannot label all the data sets in the world, but scientists come up with two actually very intelligent ways, language modeling and mass language modeling. Language modeling, I think you guys already understand. This is simply next token predict, uh, prediction, right? By asking the model to always predict the next token, next token, surprisingly, the model capture a, knowledge, a lot of world knowledge, right? It always say that whenever there's a chicky, chicky always fly, right? Yeah. So by doing next token generation, by the way, when we do next token generation, do we need to prepare label? No label, right? No label. You just need to give sentence, right? And this, this chucky you predict is. Is you predict flying, right? No need to prepare label, you understand? This is a self-supervised learning. No label is needed. And no label is so damn good because you can use everything in the world, right? To teach the model. This is the breakthrough. This is the key breakthrough that allow us to create such a powerful model like ChatGPT. So this is one way. Uh, for example, who used this way? Uh, GPT, one, two, three, uh, Mistral, uh, Llama, for example. All right. So everyone, all the big guys use this train, right? But we cannot say that another way is not good, right? Another way is simply mass language modeling, right? Instead of you predicting the next word, okay, it's fine. Why not? We can, we can also do like this, right? We have a sentence, we mass some word, right? Can you guys help me? Stanford University is located in where? In California? Huh? Stanford is not a state, all right? Anyone can help me? You don't know where Stanford is? US, no. I'm getting the state, right? Uh, is it Stanford? Okay, it's Stanford, okay. In Stanford. Is Stanford a state? Okay, great, you, you sure? Okay, we follow you, Stanford. I put what? The fork, my fork, my, I put the fork or my fork, right? The woman walked across the street checking for traffic over her shoulder, right? I went to the ocean to see the fish, turtle, seals, and chalk. <laughs> ah, do you see? When you mass, you may say, Chucky, this idea is super easy, but you can mass randomly. Everything you mass, you teach the model so many things, you see? Here you teach the model location, syntax, co-reference, lexical, semantics, sentiment. Even sentiment you can teach by masking, right? So you can see that mass language modeling is as powerful as language model, right? And these two are all self-supervised learning. No need label, but you still can teach the model. And if you don't see the power, the idea is you don't need labels, so you can fit everything in the world to create a pre-trained model, right? Right. So this too, you must understand. If all in any of you don't like mathematics, at least you must fully understand this. Okay. So these are the most important, one of the most important slides that you must know. Now, uh, the rest is a little bit difficult, but I hope that you understand like 20%. And then later on, when you code, uh, I'm preparing my bird uh, a tutorial, you will understand uh, much better. So there are three ways you can actually uh, pre-train your model, right? So firstly, I want you to take note here, right? You can pre-train using mass language modeling and language modeling, right? Like I said, and based on that, 
we can also explain it in terms of architecture. So it, you can pre-train using language modeling in a decoder architecture. So in here, you will get all the pre-trained model in a form of decoder. So this is all, this is called pre-trained decoder. So pre-trained model decoder is basically just like this, right? The decoder looks like this. If you want to pre-train using mass language modeling, uh, what you will be using the architecture is encoder, right? So encoder looks like this. So, so all of this will be pre-trained encoder. And it will look like this, right? And then you use this to do something, right? You don't actually print, you don't actually decode anything. And uh, there's a bidirectional here because uh, it's not a decoder, you can always look back, right? Because uh, you don't care about the feature anyway. So that's why it's called BERT. There's a B here. You don't have to worry. I will explain BERT uh, in a very quick manner. And finally, you can, for language modeling, it's very clear that you can also use encoder decoder architecture, right? And uh, basically you can use an encoder Right, this is the encoder. And then finally you send to a decoder. This is basically like a machine translation, paraphrasing type of thing, right? So you can also use language modeling, right? You fill in the source sentence and the, the uh, end sentence and hopefully you can uh, uh, predict the next token. Great, so there are three ways. And uh, a, a, a quick question that you may have in your brain is which one is better? There's no better, okay? It's basically on, based on scenario. If, you all, if you're very focused on generating text, you use this architecture. GPT-1, 2, 3, Llama. Lam, actually, there's some, something called Lambda, but less people use already. Bot, whatever. Uh, encoder, if you're interested in Bird, you want to pre-train like this. And encoder decoder, uh, probably T bot is probably the most famous one. My my students all use bot for summarization. Yes, uh, T five and and Pegasus uh, lose the traction a little bit, uh, especially Pegasus. Yep, uh, T five is actually very very nice by Google. Yep. Okay, great. So that is uh, the three architectures. Now let's look at how do we pre-train. By the way, do you guys, will you ever be pre-training? My suggestion is not my suggestions. My idea is that you will never, almost never pre-train any model because you guys don't have the resources. Even in AIT, no one can pre-train any model. Even in Thailand, very few people can pre-train any model, right? The best model we have in Thailand is Open Thai GPT, Typhoon, CLM, right? Which you guys don't know, but my company know. But all of them are fine tuned. We fine tune from Llama, we fine tune from Mistral, right? Yeah, you're 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 making your own Thai model, right? Yes. And uh, so we don't pre-train simply because Thailand doesn't have the each of the company or any university doesn't have enough money. How about in the US and Europe? In US and Europe, if you're talking about university, they also have no money to pre-train. So who actually pre-trained this model? Only the big company, Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, and uh, Facebook, yeah, Meta. These are the main companies that create their own pre-trained model, right? So, so that is like a uh, thing that, hey, can I pre-train? You guys were never able to pre-train because it takes too much money. But anyway, it's important to, to learn how to do actually pre-training because if you know how to pre-training, then uh, you can use those models for fine tuning. Okay, decoders. So how do we actually uh, pre-train a decoder uh, 
as a classifier, right? Well, it's actually uh, very, very simple. We just initialize maybe a LM, right? Maybe this can be a RNN, it can be LSTM, it can be what? It can be a GRU, it can be transformer, we don't care, right? We just, and then we just feed in like 1 billion sentences, okay? All right? And then just do pop, 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 many, many, many times, right? Then we save this, we save this, right? And the next time, if I want to use this guy for, for classification, then I can do, I just load this guy and then just add one linear layer and it can use it for classification. How about if I want to use for generation? I can, I just load this model and just take this one, right? Sorry, if I want to use for generation, how do I do? I just load this model, freeze this guy, freeze. Okay, you don't touch the weight here. Then you just add a linear layer here, linear layer here, linear layer here, All right? And then you can do name entity recognition. Ah, maybe you want to uh, uh, do ChatGPT. Well, you can also take this one and add another decoder, whatever, right? So that can also be very possible. So the idea of pre-training is extremely simple. You just feed in one billion sentence and save that model, right? Super easy. Now, uh, yep, this is exactly what I already said already. If you want to use a decoder as generator, you just uh, train this whole thing and save this guy. Um, so the first very successful pre-trained decoder is by OpenAI. You can see why OpenAI is so successful because they are the first to create all this, right? So they, so Radford, this guy is extremely smart. Right, he's the one that proposed first GPT. During this time, I'm and uh, I'm already finished. G I already finished my PhD, right? And I when I read this paper, I feel like, what is this? And then I just skip it, right? But who knows? This is paper is so good, right? So this guy, pre-trained a decoder, transformer, twelve layers. Uh, the hidden state is seven hundred sixty-eight. The feed forward is three thousand seventy-two. You don't need to ask me why these numbers. He probably try many numbers and find out that those numbers are very good. Uh, here, byte pair encoding with 40,000 merges. It makes sense, right? You guys learn already how to merge uh, things, right? So that is that. And it's trained on book corpus, 7,000 unique books. And then uh, finally, uh, they, they call this paper GPT. And actually he never come up what this means, but it's actually mean Hopefully it means generative pre-trained transformer. So this is the first example. Right, so now, how do we format inputs to our decoder for fine tuning tasks, right? So for example, um, here, let's say I have a natural language inference. I have something called premise. The man is in the doorway and the hypothesis is the person is near the door, right? And uh, I, I, can, I can train it in a language modeling way in which there should predict man, right? And et cetera. And even after doorway, it predict the person, right? But how do you actually format this uh, to the decoder? Deco because the decoder only accept like this, right? It only accept a, a linear sentence, right? Now you have you have two sentence. I have now, now you have two sentence, but this guy only accept one sentence, right? So how do you actually train for different? You have so many tasks and so many things, right? Actually, super simple. This guy is the one that pioneer a way that is super simple. You have the start, which makes sense. You have this, and he just put a something called delimiter. Right, and then <laughs> the person is near the door, right? And then uh, he put another token here, extract, right? And finally, this guy is sent to the linear layer, 
to predict uh, whether this is a uh, entailing contradictory or neutral. It's a little bit difficult. You understand what I'm talking right now, like 30 to 40%. But once you code, you will find that actually they are quite simple, right? There's, there's nothing. All of these are embedding, embedding, embedding. These are all embedding. Even extract token is embedding. But be, because extract is an embedding, you can always send to the linear layer, right? To predict whatever you want, right? So this is, uh, you can see that using this scheme, reports say that you can use classification tasks to pre-train, to fine tune. You can use entailment to fine tune. You can fine tune similarities and multiple choice. Yep, all right. Um, I have to pause a little bit and reduce the confusion you may have. What I'm talking about in this slide is fine tuning, okay? I'm talking about fine tuning. In pre-training, you don't need to do anything. You just feed whatever you want and next token, next token, right? But for fine tuning, when you want to fine tune, you already have a model that you pre-train, right? Now you want to make it very good for classification. How do you do? You just uh, do according to how he format the text and then add a linear layer and train only this layer. Understood? Also this train only <laughs> this linear layer. Yep. So that is exactly how he say, after you pre-train model, how do you fine tune them? And this is uh, his idea. Yep. So the, this guy is super smart and uh, after that, everyone is using it. And one thing uh, you may not even notice is this part, right? You may say why it looks like this is because it's because this is a transformer, but it's only decoder, right? You can see it's only a decoder. You don't need the encoder. This is a decoder only architecture that is pre-trained. So you don't create a, a encoder. Yep. Uh, I will skip this. It's just trying to say he is the best. Uh, for those who, if you join my lab, and uh, if you want to join my lab, you have to create this nice table comparing with many, not not too many, but some, and uh, try to publish papers. Now, before I move on, I think uh, I already throw a lot of information to you. Why not we take a break? Cool. And then we come back uh, on encoders. Yep. Let's take a break. Thank you. All right. So uh, let's come back and uh, let me uh, explain one more time. Uh, perhaps I'm too excited and I go too fast. I will explain one more time. And then the, maybe I draw from scratch, right? And then so you truly understand how to do pre-training as decoder. By the way, if you don't already notice, this is uh, something that is proposed in 2018, but in 2023, you may ask me decoder, encoder, encoder, decoder, which one are the most successful? Two times we, uh, we found that this way is the most popular one, right? So I will, try to explain it in, uh, in a very slow way and maybe more example than that you can probably understand better, right? So uh, give me a whiteboard, please. All right, so, okay, uh, we got the whiteboard now. So, so firstly, let's talk about pre-training, right? Right, and here I'm doing in a decoder fashion, all right? And let's say I c consider everything for generation, right? Right, um, so how do I, I pre-train model, right? So for example, I have so many texts, right? I have so many texts, right? So what I can do is uh, 
I can initialize uh, a transformer or INN, LSTM, whatever you want. I will show you example of LSTM, right? Because you guys are very, like you are so already understand LSTM, right? But transformer may not be so familiar, right? So you initialize the LSTM that you love, right? And how do you actually uh, pre-train uh, a decoder? Well, very simple. Uh, whenever it, you have check key, you want it to predict east, right? Let, let's say the input is uh, check key is y. is flying, right? So what is a la language modeling? What do you do? You add, you need to add a linear layer here, right? Right, otherwise this, you cannot output ease, right? You understand? This is a, a word, right? You, you, you don't just output ease, right? You need to put a linear layer here, right? So there's a linear layer here, and then you, you predict what? Ease, right? And then you take this ease, loss function with this is right and then you train and then e should predict what another linear layer and then the, and then come up with what flying right and then the flying you pass through a linear layer and then the, and then the eos correct so how many times you do like this? You do a, in the GPT, they do 7,000 uh, books, right? So I don't know how many sentences is that. It's like probably a lot of sentence, right? Yep. And I don't even know how they chop the sentence. Yep. But anyway, um, that is the idea. So through this process, through this uh, pre-trained uh, next token generation, we hope that it understand the nature of language, right? So this is the whole purpose of uh, pre-training. That is in understand uh, the nature of, of uh, that. Um, so how about in fine tuning? Fine tuning. Right. Um, so in fine tuning, um, okay, I'm actually doing uh, generation, right? I have to give you an example of uh, classification too. So in a classification, you can do like this. So let's say, what if you want to also pre-train a decoder as a classification, right? You can also do that. So pre-training, decoder, right, as a classification, right? So, how do I squeeze it? Like this. Okay, so uh, to to uh, do the classification, you can do like this, right? In which uh, Chucky, e, right? Is right, but you have to think about like this. Whenever you want to do classification, you don't want this linear layer, right? You don't want this architecture because it always have a linear layer at the end, right? So you cannot use this architecture for to fine tune for classification. You understand? Because if you use this architecture, it will automatically output always each of this word, right? So for classification purpose, you cannot add a linear layer here, right? So well, how do we do this? Uh, well, we can just simply do it like this. Right, and uh, uh, finally, 
we just uh, maybe train. Uh, finally, we take the, okay, we don't have the linear layer in, in each of them. So how do we, how do we train uh, a model without linear layer in each of them? Well, it's very simple. We take the last hidden states and try to predict the next word, right? Maybe we chop here, right? But the next word that is Chucky is flying on, right? We take the last hidden state and try to predict, maybe add a linear layer and try to predict on, right? So this is uh, the way you can do, right? In which by using this way, you don't have the linear layer in each of the cell. Do you understand? Simply because we don't want linear layer on top. Otherwise, when we take this pre-trained architecture, we cannot use it applied to classification tasks. So how do we do? We take the last hidden state and take that one to pass through some linear layer and predict on. Now, when you actually take this one for fine tuning, which part you take it? For generation, you take this whole thing, right? And froze it, and you froze it, all right? And uh, use it. For classification, you only take this part. Okay, you don't take this part because this part is for next token generation, right? You want to take, you want to teach it to understand the edge, and then <laughs> add a linear layer on the next, so that you can do classification, right? Now, this is all pre-training. You understand? This is all pre-training. This is a still in pre-training stage, right? So you feed a lot of sentence, and then uh, you got this. Uh, to architecture that you pre-train, right? So now, how do we actually apply this thing to fine tuning? This is the question, right? In theory, this is useless if this can be, cannot be fine tuned in all of the NLP tasks, you understand? It should be able to uh, apply to all NLP tasks, all, right? So the next step is probably what adds to confusion is you guys don't understand all of the, all of the NLP tasks, right? So that's why you don't understand that slide. So let me quickly <laughs> teach you guys what are some tasks that is what they wrote, right? So first of all is uh, natural language inference. So in this task, Given H and, sorry, given uh, premises and hypothesis, you need to predict whether it's uh, less, I don't want to say entailment, okay, let's say entailment, uh, contradictory, contradictory, or what? Neutral. So let's say that. So, what is the example of this test? Premises. Chucky loves deep learning. Hypothesis. Premise is you know he loves deep learning, okay? You know he loves deep learning. Maybe I give you a hypothesis. If so, then Chucky probably loves playing game. What do you think is a label? True or false? You tell me. True or false? Huh? True? <laughs> it's no relationship, okay? Ah, oh, by the way, this is subjective, okay? Okay, the, the, the data set will tell you, okay? You don't need to worry about it. The data set will tell you this is true or false, okay? So maybe it's, uh, it's contradictory. Sorry? So the data, you will have, how many of these? You will have like, uh, 10,000 of this, right? In the data set, in the data set, right? It's already, some people already label for you, right? So now the question is, if you have this task, how do you actually fine tune the pre-trained model for this task? This is the question, right? you you got a very nice pre-trained model. Now you want to fine tune it for only this purpose. Do you understand? Yeah, this is the idea, pre-training, fine-tuning, pre-training, fine-tuning. So you load the model, you load the model. So you load your beautiful model, right? 
correct? And you load which one? You load the one that is decoder as classifier, right? Because we know that we will be doing classification, right? So I'm gonna load this architecture. I will not load the one with linear layer on top, correct? Right? Now, oh gosh, this is tough. I have two sentences, right? Oh, my architecture, except how many sentences? Only one. Then check it, then everyone say, ah, oh, your pre-training no use. Even you create the best pre-trained model in the world that knows everything in the world, you cannot fine tune, then useless, correct? Correct? If you cannot fine tune for any task, it's useless. This Radford guy said, no, 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 no. I can fine tune all NLP tasks. Okay, how? His technique is super easy. He just do something like this, right? So you can imagine very long sentence, okay? Okay, the way he do it is something like this, right? Uh, by the way, blue means fr freeze, okay? Freeze, pre-trained model. So you add, you send in, maybe start. Chucky loves deep learning. Okay. Okay. I will be writing very short. And then whenever you finish the premise, you need to signal the model a little bit. They are two chunk. Okay. The model, you don't need to confuse. This is one chunk and this is one chunk. Okay. So Radford create a new way called just add a special token. It does not need to be named delim, okay? It can be called comma. It can be called separator. Any name, it doesn't matter, but you just need to give a token. So he used delim, okay? You guys, if you guys confused, you probably why, why delim? It can be also like this, you understand? It can also be comma. It doesn't matter what is written. You just give a name to this, but this guy is still embedding size of 300, understand? Each of them is embedding size of 300. Hmm. So now, why do you need, need to have this? Because we want to signal the model that, oh, there's a next sentence. I don't know, I don't know. The model, you don't need to tell the model this is premise. This is hypothesis. You don't need to tell the model. The model will be amazingly able to do it, right? So now, uh, you still have, uh, Right, your I mean, all of this is pre-trained, right? It's come from your pre-trained architecture, right? Now, um, uh, how about uh, H? Well, you continue. Chucky loves playing game, correct? Mm. So you keep sending it. All right, this is all pre-trained architecture, right? It's pre-trained by you. Hmm. Now, he said that, oh, Chucky, I found that if I just simply send the last hidden state to a linear layer, it's a too much information, right? So he add another token called extract. Hmm. So he add another token. And again, if you're confused, like why is it called extract? You don't have to worry about it. It's just he, his idea that he, his name is extract. It can be any name, right? It can be just a final summary or something like right? that. But his name is extract. Oh my goodness. Did I destroy everything? Extract. All right? And then finally, he say that you load the pre-trained model, you send in everything, you don't need to train this blue thing, okay? Because it's pre-trained. It contains all the knowledge already. It will extract the key information from this sentence because the pre-trained model can do that. And then you just fine tune the orange part, which is this part. Oh, orange is a horrible color. Uh, 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 green, yes, green, yeah, right? You just add a linear layer here. Only this guy you need to tune, understood? You only need to train this guy. Here you froze all. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you don't know how to do this, uh, it's simply uh, 
uh, uh, layers dot grad equal to false in PyTorch. It's only that. If you wonder like how to freeze, right? In PyTorch is only layers dot grad equal to false. Yep. I mean, it, don't quote me. It's not exactly like this, but it's something dot grad, okay? Yep. So the idea is once you load a pre-trained model, you send in everything, how do you know that this H is very good? We can trust it because this one is pre-trained through 10 million times, right? We know that this H contains all the important information. Then you initialize this linear layer. How do you initialize in PyTorch? Very simple. You just say CNN uh, uh, dot uh, layers equal to new layer, something like that, right? And then you can now get a new layer, right? And then you just, what, what it should predict? We have the label. The label is contracted code. Then through this, we can train because the last function is very clear, right? That this free train model passed through this linear layer that is only fine tuned this one. It should predict contracted code, right? Now, if you don't understand already, then uh, there's a many other tasks, right? And I would quickly go back to my slides. By the way, the way hopefully this uh, explained better now. Uh, how do you actually take the pre-train model and fine tune it, right? Of course, I haven't talked about how do you use a generator, right? But it's the same idea, right? It's the same idea. Now, uh, and did I actually record, guys? I do. <laughs> so scary. Yeah. So now, let us. So now, the only thing you may be confused is what is this term, right? So classification, the input is a text, and you classify whether it's yes, no, good, bad, whatever, right? So there's only one text. And he said that his way, you can structure your input like this, start token, text, extract token, send the last extract token to the transformer. He doesn't like our, he did not use LSTM by the way, because LSTM cannot accommodate different length, right? So your architecture is useless, but when you train as a transformer, it can accept your architecture is, is independent of the length of the input, right? So use in transformer and then you finally, you only tune the linear layer, correct? Now, entailment is basically what I already told you. How do you actually, Structure the input, start, premise, billing, hypothesis, extract. Send this extract to transformer, tune the linear layer. Okay, do you guys want me to talk more? Okay, someone say yes, someone say no. Yes, and similarities, what is the similarity? What is the similarity text? You have two sentences, right? You want to know whether they are similar or different, they, there is a data set like this. Then you can just send in in this format. And then he believed that text two and text one is different from text one and text two. Because if you don't remember, this is QK, QK is different, right? Yep. Then you two sentence, you get the output, you add them, pass to linear layer. Multiple choice is another NLP task that I never teach you, right? But you should also understand that it has some context and some answer. Right, and then uh, uh, what is context? Context is basically uh, who, so context is who play, uh, who win yesterday, or who play, who play uh, Brazil in the World Cup, something like that, right? This is the context. Answer one, answer one is German, Germany, answer two, uh, what, Italy, answer three, Thailand, right? I think Thailand will be there, yeah. And you put it here, you pass through them, the transformer, add them together, you will know that, oh, the answer is answer one, okay? The point that you should focus on is not the task because you guys don't understand the task, right? You guys can go understand the task, but the point is, 
if you can take a pre-trained model and can fine tune for any task, it's fantastic, correct? It's fantastic. So this is the point. And you must understand this slide because it can be applied in any scenario. Got it? Okay. Anyone have any, any questions? I will, I will let you guys uh, think for a couple of minutes. Sorry? If we have a long bit and we just need the last of the mail, we need to put in one day information. Okay, so uh, Russia asked a very quick question. If we have super long sentence, will it lost? Well, the beginning will be lost, right? Something like that, like you forget the very beginning, right? No, because we're using transformer. Transformer use self-attention, right? The beginner, the begin, the word in the beginning will always have attention with the last word, always. So it will never forget. Okay. So transformer fix everything already. It fix basically long all the long-term dependencies. But actually, Code actually no, because uh, in Transformer, there's something called maximum token. Uh, but how about you guys go start coding and then you come back to me, yeah. You, you guys did not code yet, so you have a lot of things that are not clear, yeah. But uh, hopefully this will already give you the theory required to code. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is uh, just uh, saying that is good. Now, feed training as encoder. This way, no people ever use it anymore. All right. I mean, yes, it does, like Word, but but Word is losing traction because. Uh, when you think in that way, decoder can do everything, right? Like ChatGPT, it can do everything already. So this way is less popular and not, not much people do it anymore, but it's also, but it's still a very in, an interesting way. So the, <laughs> so the idea is the way you can do is, the input is you mask this, you can mask any word you want. And instead of language modeling in which you predict the next word, you only predict the missing word. You only predict the missing word. Yeah. And, uh, but what you have to analyze is that there's a, a lot of characteristics, right? Because this is a <laughs> encoder only, You can do, you can do bidirectional, right? This guy can learn in this fashion and this one can also learn in this fashion. That, that means basically I'm trying to say is that in the decoder previously, we are using mass attention, right? Correct? We are using mass attention, but in bird, we are using attention. So what is the difference between mass attention and attention? In mass attention, let's say I have my own word, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, I want to find attention, right? I will never allow it to know any future word. So all of this is become minus infinity. I think you remember that slides, right? And all of this, okay. But for attention, you can have fully full, full attention, yes. So because you use a mass language modeling, you can learn by directional. That's why it's called BERT. There's a bi-directionality, yes. This one. Another properties you can <clears throat> see is that 
because you train like this, you, you, you cannot take, of course you have so many linear layers when you pre-train, you, you, you initialize these linear layers just to predict this mass, right? But you cannot take these linear layers as a pre-train. You can only take the blue part as pre-train because this linear layer is specific to what you mass, right? So they don't contain general knowledge. So in fact, what I'm trying to say is that when you train as encoder, you can only take the blue part. And because you train in, in this way, it naturally falls. This, whenever you train like this, you, it's naturally you only use the last one. Understood? For classification. Linear layer, and then send to classification. Naturally. So BERT is mainly for classification. You cannot use for generation. Um, so there are a lot of uh, ways you think uh, to, to explain the how do we actually do this, right? <clears throat> so the key question is, how do we mass? Which word to mass? Walt? Uh, predict a random 15% of the subword tokens. So basically, 15% of these words in this sentence. 80% of them, 80% of this 15% will have this mass, okay? And this is example, right? Of course, this look like, I mean, I, I basically perturb the whole sentence, but actually it's only 15%, okay? 15%. The next one is out of this 15%, we already masked the 80%. The 10% we replace with a random token. So for example, uh, actually I, I should say I went to the store, right? But I perturbed this one. You may say, why do I want to do that? Why do I want to do that? Um, simply because uh, we want to add some challenge to the model that without mass, with, with mass, you should be able to predict this. But even, even if when I replace the word, and you are also asked to predict the word that you replace, okay? Very challenging, but even you perturb it, I ask the model to able to predict the mass word. So it basically adds more challenge to this task. But you can see it's only 10%. You, you don't want to add more than 10% because uh, it will make the, chart, the, the training undoable, right? And then um, you, also have, you also have 10% that you did not do anything, but you ask it to predict the same word. Why you want to do that? Because you want to fool the model to understand that, ah, you need to predict this word, okay? But actually it's the same word. So you don't, you, allow, you add one more challenge to the model so that it does not always uh, think that, oh, if you give me pizza, I will always put pizza, right? I have two case. Pizza, it must be when. Two must be two, right? So the more you force the model to think very heavily, what are the right, in, output, right? So this is a super clever way uh, to balance everything out so that the model truly learns something, right? And this is uh, super cool. Yep. And uh, this actually explained uh, the idea uh, you don't want to get the model uh, complacent about uh, all this thing. Yep. Yep, right, any questions? Yep. Oh. Sorry? Yeah, the might be the biggest friend. Ah, so, so, the, so Russia asked, uh, why do you have pizza and when, right? So this is just basically the way I perturb the sentence, right? So out of the 15% of the tokens, 10% of them, I will simply replace them. And I ask them to predict the right word. 
All right. Sorry. Huh? When, is not the right when is the right word? Kisa is not the right word. You want me to give an example? Anyone want me to give an example? Okay, so so for example, uh, you, you give me a sentence. Uh, uh, Chucky, oh, this is a horrible color. Chucky is eating sushi and uh, laughing alone at AIT. Okay? Chucky is eating sushi and laughing alone at AIT. You guys count how many tokens I have. Just words, okay? How many words I have? Including full stop. 10, okay? I have 10. What is 15% uh, of 10? One? Only one? Oh my goodness. So let's, let's say two, okay? Let's say two, okay? Ah, two. So, so I think this is too short. Okay, give me, give me one second. Is eating at AIT and laughing at and and uh, is Chucky is eating sushi and laughing alone at AIT and and thinking about his life yeah. and thinking about his life. I'm so sorry. It, thinking about his life. All right, how many words I have, guys? Okay. Including full stop. 15? Okay, 15. 15% uh, 15 of 15, guys, is how much? Boom. Three. Let's say three. Who, who is good in math? 15% of 15 words are how many? Uh, let's say three, okay? Three, okay? So three. Okay, so three of this thing will be perturbed. Understood? Three of this is perturbed. I see already the face of uh, gentleman here. Why 15? Why? Why 15? This guy think it should be 15. Okay? You may say, why 15? He checked already. He checked 15, 20, 30, 40. He already do. And he tell us the story that after three years of experiment of his painful PhD, he found that 15% is good. Do you understand? It's not suddenly he say 15. No. He do experiment for three years. And he finally know it should be 15. Do you understand? Yes. Now, we have three tokens we need to randomly perturb. You tell me a number of 1 to 15. Ah, 4. Okay. So, 4. Ah, you tell me randomly 1 to 15, any word you want. Any word. Six, okay. Randomly, huh? Randomly. You tell me, huh? Why 10? Why not 11? Okay. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Ah, we have three words. He say that 80% of this three word must be with mass. 80% of three is what? Upper, upper. Round up, 80% of three is 0 0.8 times three is 2.4. Then it's two, lah, okay? It's two, yes. Okay, it's two, okay? Which one? Randomly. Randomly, okay? So how do you do? Uh, you tell me randomly? Randomly, randomly. Then you, this one become... Okay, uh, randomly, uh, randomly, oh, randomly. And then the, this one gone. Okay, randomly, okay. Now, he say that, actually, we already run out of uh, tokens. 10% of them must be replaced with a random token. 10% of three is 0 0.3, right? Yeah, let's say one, okay? Let's say one. Actually, 
uh, it depends whether you want to round up or round down, but if it's round down, it's zero, right? Then you don't need to do this. So it's one. So this guy, you must randomly change it to anything, okay? Anything you want. Like give me any random word you like in the world. Pizza, why pizza? Okay, good. You change it to pizza. Oh, pizza. Okay, now there's also left 10. Uh, actually, we are, we don't have this token, right? 10%, right? We don't have more, right? Finish. But how about we say we add one more token, okay? Because we don't have here. Let's say 10% of this is uh, one more guy, okay? So let's say Chucky, okay? Uh, you also change this guy, but you don't tell the, the model that actually you did not change, but you tell him you change, okay? So you change to Chucky. Okay? And this is the process of the pre-processing you need to do, okay? Once you do this, what is the loss function? You only predict the orange one, okay? You only predict the orange one. What is the label for this guy? The label for this guy, you tell me. What is the label for this guy? The true label. Chucky, correct? What is the true label of this guy? Sushi. What is true label of this guy? Eating. What is the true label of this guy? Eh? Okay, and now you set up the whole training sample. What do you do? Very simple. You create a transformer that you guys learned already, correct? You feed in the whole thing. But the own, whenever it's Chucky, it must predict Chucky. Is, no, no need to predict, okay? No need to predict. You, you don't predict is. Uh, pizza, whenever it's pizza, pizza, you predict what? Sushi, etc. Understood? You only predict the one that you perturb in this fashion. This is called mass language modeling. Understood? Anyone has any other questions? Yeah. I think it's super clear, probably, yeah. Okay, Russia. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, how about we stop here and do I have code? Oh, you told me to explain A4, right? Okay, great. So thank you very much, YouTubers. Uh, I will now explain my assignment, but I will now stop the video, right? And then we will continue this like Wednesday, okay? Because there's a lot of, I think your head is like, oh my God, so many information, right? So I'm gonna pause and then uh, finish. Thank you very much. Um,